Okay, today we're going to do something kind of fun. We're going to uh, shorten the barrel on this Norinco SKS by about four inches. And then in a later video, I'll show you how to thread the barrel. So today we're going to cut the barrel to 16 and a quarter inches long. And then we're going to level face and recrown the barrel. And I'm going to show you how to do this um, without buying fancy tools. You can buy the tools to get this done. And it'll be a little bit easier and a whole lot more expensive. But this way it works also. If you're not working on a high precision rifle, you can do this the way that I'm going to show you how to do it. And it'll work just fine. A lot of people are going to say that... Um, you know, you need to buy these really fancy carbide bitter and bit and facing tools. And, you know, if you're building a super high precision sniper rifle, that is the case. You want to be as perfect as possible. But not the case here, where I'll be shooting 200 yards or less with this gun. It's not going to make a difference. So let's take a look at the tools that we're going to need today. Um, we've got our hacksaw couple different grades of sandpaper, valve polishing compound or valve grinding compound, uh, some little special tools that I've made for the barrel facing, um, some files, and a couple other things here that we'll go through as the video goes on. I'm also going to show you what to do about the front sight if you cut your barrel like this. Because since we're cutting this section off, we're going to lose our front sight. Um, so I'm going to use a front sight called the uh, Prince 50. But I think they've gone out of business. Um, the company that made them was Bullet Button. And they actually don't make these anymore that I've found. I just found this um, on the primary market. So it comes with all the pieces that we need to relocate this. Uh, front sight, we'll put it somewhere around here. And then later on, we're also going to remove this rear sight and move it to the back for a peep sight. But that's for later on. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to decide how long of a barrel that you want. In this case, I wanted 16 inches, but um, we'll give ourselves a quarter inch for error. If this is the first time that you're doing something like this or you're not familiar with this kind of work, you may want to go at least 16 and a half to 17 inches and that'll give you room for air like I mean if something crazy happens you'll have some extra room um, <clears throat> so anyway we'll measure our barrel to exactly where we want and then use a pipe cutter here you're gonna to want to use a heavy-duty pipe cutter because this barrel is slightly tapered and if you get a cheap pipe cutter or a flimsy pipe cutter as you mark your position where you want your cut to be and start turning, it'll actually start going up or down the barrel. This way or this way. Most likely this way because of the taper. And you're not going to get a good cut. So we're not cutting the barrel off with this. I'm just making, um, making my mark. A good, a good even mark all the way around. You may be able to cut it um, with one of these cutters, but it's going to smush the metal and... It's just not the best, not the best idea. So we're going to cut it with a hacksaw, and the way we're going to do that, we're going to use it, do it by hand with a high carbon steel blade, and then we've got a piece of half inch steel angle here, and I'm going to set it over here. Use a rubber footed clamp to hold it in place, and I'm going to use that as my guide to cut this as straight as I can. Um, the straightness that you cut it isn't super important because we're going we're gonna to true up the barrel face. So we want to get it as close as we can, but it's not a huge deal. So let's go ahead and get started here. Okay, and I'm not too worried about, um, about finish, I'll tell you that, uh, because I have access to Cerakote. And I can also re-blue it, I mean, I'm not really worried about it. If you're worried about the finish... You could probably mask off this area that we're clamping this piece of steel to so that you don't mess it up, but like I said, I don't really care about it. So 
So we've got that in place. What I should have told you before this was um, you want to go ahead and run a patch or some kind of barrel obstruction down the barrel and stop a little bit before where we're going to be doing all this work. That's going to keep shavings and uh, lapping paste and all that kind of stuff out of our action and away from the part of the barrel that we're working on. Let me go ahead and do that real quick. Okay. Now that that's done, we can start cutting our barrel. And you just want to go slow here. Um, we're not in a big hurry. We just want to make a nice, slow, straight cut. So we'll get our saw as straight as we can get it. Go nice and slow. I'm just using my two fingers here to put a little bit of tension back on my square so I can make sure that the blade is nice and straight. Okay, there's our barrel section with the front sight still attached. All right, so see how nasty our barrel face is there? We're going to clean it up with a file, just a little bit, and then we will um, go ahead and face the barrel. All right. So we're going to use a, uh, a mill bastard file for the face here. I'm going to take off this extra metal from our final cut where it's kind of hanging over. You're going to go one direction with your file. You don't want to file back and forth. Taking off these rough corners. And these aren't too important because we're going to uh, 
resize the barrel. We're going to turn the barrel down later on and put some threads on it. So, but we just want to clean it up. Clean this thing up. Take some brake cleaner here. So we can see what we're working with. Cool. It looks really straight. We made a good cut. Just trying to get a the face as straight as possible before we start with our sandpaper. It's just going to save us a lot of sandpaper work. So what I'm doing here is I'm pushing the file up against the barrel and then looking for spots that I can see through to locate my high spots in the metal that we need to take off. And this thing is really close. So we're going to go ahead and leave it like this and start our next step. Okay, so we finished our file work getting the barrel pretty straight. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna use this tool here to put a straight face or to face the barrel. And the way that this works is we'll get a piece of sandpaper, punch a hole in it, put it just like this. And uh, this is a 5 sixteenths piece of rod. It's gonna fit right in the end of the barrel here just like that and then we're gonna spin it with a drill you can spin it by hand or you can spin it with a drill it doesn't matter I've done it both ways actually but that's the idea here we want to spin this and spin this to make the face of this barrel flat it's gonna take a while so you're gonna have to be patient I'll put a link to the description of this video on how to make these little tools here and these are perfect they they work perfectly I've done them I've used this kind of thing multiple times this is what we're um, making instead of buying these tools can run you over a hundred dollars um, to face this barrel here and after we do this we'll go ahead and put a crown on it so let me get the camera set up well and like I said this is gonna take a while I've got three different sets of pen sandpaper cut up here in these little squares. I've got 80 grit to start out with and then 320 and 600. We'll finish it off with 600. I just pre-cut these little squares. It just makes it easier so I don't have to do it uh, one at a time. Um, we're not going to get our tool and our drill super tight because we don't want to damage the wood since it's just wood. We'll go ahead and put some forward pressure on here and start spinning. See the barrel face. It's already starting to look a lot better. Still got some rough spots in it.
All right, we've got our barrel face nice and flat now. Took about uh, 45 minutes of sanding to get this thing where I wanted it to be. Because we're not only getting it flat, but we want to take out all the imperfections left from, uh, from the saw cut when we were cutting the barrel. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use valve grinding compound or a lapping compound and a brass screw. You can use a brass machine screw or whatever you can find that has this round head here. And what you want to do is make sure you get a solid brass screw. Uh, the most common ones that you'll find at the hardware store are only brass plated and you don't want that. So we're going to take our screw and chuck it up in the drill. I think I'm going to use a different drill that's a little bit straighter. All right, I'm going to use my drill here and this valve compound. And what it is is pretty much a paste with a bunch of sanding material infused into it. And I'm going to put it all over the screw head here. Get a whole bunch of it on there and on the barrel. And what we want to do here is we're going to crown the barrel, which pretty much means to put a taper from the center inward. We're going to have a reverse, uh, we're going to have a cone pretty much going in there. So there we go. Make sure you put nice firm pressure and we're going to go to town. When you first start, you want to make sure you keep reapplying this paste you don't want to run it dry. Okay, got it nice and clean. There we go. Really good looking crown there. I'll take some pictures like I said. Because this camera isn't the best. Awesome. Alright, next up, we're going to install our front sight. Alright, so when you're installing your front sight, what you want to do is make sure that your receiver is level. So what I've done here is just leveled it here in the vise, and I'm on this flat part of the receiver. So we know that this is level. And then um, slide, your, slide your front sight on here. The, it'll come with instructions. I mean, it's pretty much common sense. And this sight actually came with a barrel and a front sight, so I didn't have to remove... Um, my old one, so that was nice. It comes with a main set screw here at the bottom, two small set screws for the top of the barrel here, 
and then um, the, the front sight components. So the next thing that you want to do is get your level here on the side and make sure it is straight up and down. Okay, so you can see how that's straight here. And you want to make sure that um, you do it on the side that you did not put the screw on. See, since this screw and the barrel are sticking out further on this side, I'm not getting a good, good measurement. But there you go. That's all you have to do. If it's not perfectly straight, it's okay because you have plenty of adjustment here. Uh, but you definitely want to get it as close as possible. Um, another thing that you could do is you could also... You could try to put a level here on the barrel, but it's going to be difficult um, because, for one, the barrel is tapered, um, and also you have this gas block here. So you're not going to get a really good measurement as far as, as level. But I went ahead and Loctited this screw down here at the bottom. So will it tighten it down? Let's read the instructions and see. Let's see. Lightly tighten the large screw. Okay. It is lightly tight. And then tighten the two small screws. It says what? Tighten the two small screws tightly. Then turn the large screw one half turn more. So that's it. Um, I'll tell you that I left three quarters of an inch of the barrel sticking out here at the front and that's going to give me plenty of room for threads and also a, um, a my my lock ring so typically on these kind of threads you're going to thread about half an inch I just wanted to leave myself a little bit extra because I don't want to butt all the way up against this sight uh, because it is not welded to the barrel or pinned to the barrel it's just tightened with these screws so it's going to be sturdy but not as sturdy, I really don't want to be like threading something against it for the possibility that it might move. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some Loctite on these little ones here too. Oh, and uh, this front sight, it just slides. It just slides on. It's really easy. You don't have to pound it on or anything like that. And there's a little bit of this bottom screw sticking out the bottom. What I'll do once I get it where it's going to stay is uh, I'll just cut that little bit of extra off that's sticking out there. So it's nice and flat. All right, look at these things. We will tighten them tightly, like the instructions say. It seems like all this hardware is made of some pretty good quality. It's not even trying to round off or anything, so that's really nice to know. But there we go. We got our shortened 16-inch SKS barrel with our new Prince 50 front sight. Let me go ahead and give you a view of the old crown versus the homemade crown that we did here. So on the left is the factory crown. And on the right is the one that we did here today with our homemade tools. So you can see the crown on the left is a little bit deeper than this one here. But that's just fine. If you want to make it uh, go deeper, then you know you can just stay on it a little bit more with the brass in the, in the lapping compound. You can, it's kind of up to you how you want to do that. So there we go. Looks pretty good. I'm really happy with it. Uh, it's definitely going to do what I need it to do. And stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see the video on the threading of the barrel. I've already uh, got, this, got my uh, muzzle device on the way. So should be pretty fun. If you have any questions on what I did here in this video today or any comments, let me know. Thanks for watching.